So, Sequel Terror hurt me to read. <laughs> Not because it's a bad manga, but because the issues that it brought up were so close to home and made me cringe so bad on a personal level that it made parts of it difficult for me to get through. Now, the main character of our story, Ogano, can be very painful to watch at times, but he's immediately relatable to anyone who I would say has gone through a loser phase in their life, right? And as someone who went through a vast number of their teenage years as a complete and total wiener, Ogino's thought process is simultaneously nostalgically familiar while also deeply infuriating at a very root level for me. See, our main character Okino is by all accounts a pretty regular kid who happens to have a deep love of motorcycles, but he lacks any sort of confidence. And because of this lack of confidence or willingness to stand up for himself, he gets relentlessly bullied by the resident asshole, Tanawaki. Tanawaki forces Ogino and Ogino's homie, Takai, to do his bidding whenever and wherever he feels like. If this means leaving class in order to go get the homie Tanawaki a sandwich, you're gonna go do it. If this means waking up in the middle of the night to go over to the park while Tanawaki's shooting dice to open his can of pop for him because he didn't feel like doing it, you best believe you're gonna be there with bells on. As you can imagine, being subjected to this sort of dehumanizing and emasculating behavior on a consistent basis has left Ogino feeling pretty much like the scum of the earth. He sees no redeeming qualities within himself at all in Ogino's mind, he is a weak, scrawny, subhuman errand boy whose only hope is to cause as little trouble as possible so he can graduate high school and hopefully never see Tanawaki again. Now, one of the favorite parts of this reading for me is author Minoto Furia's dialogue and the way that he writes Ogino. I would say that it's extremely masterfully written. Now, if you've ever been somebody that struggled with like depression, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, then the thoughts that are running through Ogino's head in this story are going to be something that you're going to be very familiar with. Because Ogino's opinion of himself is so low, he assumes that this is what every person whom he interacts with thinks of him as well. The self-loathing bleeds into every relationship within Ogino's life, with special attention being given to Ogino's relationship with his crush, Nagumo. Now, my goal in the video isn't to give you a plot summary necessarily, but I gotta go into this a little bit because it goes into some of the key themes of the story. See, our homie Ogino is super into this girl that he met at the motorcycle driving classes named Nagumo, but because Ogino's confidence is so low, because he thinks like himself as a piece of crap pretty much, he sees himself as having zero chance chance with this girl like no chance in hell but as fate would have it he gets noticed by Nagamo and her friend one day because of the pain on his face from his daily round of bullying from Tanawaki and then things begin to move from there a little bit now this is where Sigratera took the little knife that it had and then plunged it directly into my heart and then began twisting that shit because Jesus Christ if you are somebody that has ever battled with low self-esteem a lack of confidence or have ever felt yourself to not necessarily be the picture of a, of a Chad right then the interactions that Ogino has with others and the dialogue that he has with um other people and social interactions and also just himself is going to hit really close to home. Furia is able to expertly showcase the poison that is depression and low self-esteem. And quick side note, Ciguatera is actually the name of the illness one gets from eating bad fish, leading to symptoms such as nausea, nervousness, and the mixing up of sensations of hot and cold, among other generally terrible things, right? Uh, for my mileage, Ciguatera in this context is being used as a metaphor for the toxicity that can occur from allowing certain people in our lives, as well as how illnesses such as depressions and problems with like lack of internal confidence can poison the mind and basically lead one into interpreting situations in a different way than they objectively are. Now, to get back to how this applies to the homie Ogino. See, Ogino's thought process leads him to assuming the worst possible situation in any scenario, right? And because his thought process is that things are going to automatically turn out bad no matter what I do, this leads him into fulfilling this prophecy and the actual event does become bad because he's basically talked himself into it being terrible from the very beginning. Many examples of this come up in the story, but for our purposes, we'll use his first interaction with his crush, Nagamo, as an example. See, Nagamo's friend is aware that Nagamo is into our boy Ogino and works to set up a casual hangout where they can all go to a restaurant and just talk for a bit, you know, casually hang out. While walking to the restaurant as a group, Ogino walks behind Nagamo and her friend in complete silence and answers every question with short one-word responses. 
it's as awkward as it sounds and it hurt my heart to read and that's how I knew this book is really good. Then when they arrive at the restaurant, things aren't much better. The entire time he's with his crush, he's living in his brain and not the real world, thinking about how the girls basically must be entrapping him, right? They think that it must be a setup, that after this um this hangout session, they're going to go laugh at him and just basically call him a wiener and make fun of him a whole bunch. Ogino sincerely feels that Nagamo is embarrassed to be seen with him and that he should just keep his head down and be as quiet as possible. See, one of the most insidious things about depression and low self-esteem is the fact that it affects not only the person that's dealing with the the sad and depressed feelings, but it also impacts every interaction they have with the people around them as well. Those dealing with significant depression typically have a tendency to only assume the worst in other people. They feel like a piece of crap, so they assume that those around them must also think the same of them, leading them to lash out at others, assuming they are being mocked, or assuming that those who are treating them well are basically doing it to be funny. Or alternatively, what people with depression and low self-esteem can often do is blow up a relationship themselves because in their mind, there's no way that things are going to end well for them. So in order to get things over with because they already know that things are going to end bad, they'll just destroy things themselves before the other person basically gets the chance to hurt them. Because in their mind, they pretty much have the thought process that like if the pain is going to come now or later, why not just get it over with now and be done with it? If I could only recommend Sea with Terror for one reason, it would be because it serves as a merciless mirror for those dealing with depression, self-confidence, or low self-esteem issues. Sometimes seeing our own BS reflected back at us from a different vantage point can be a catalyst for change. It can make us introspect, be a wake-up call, and hopefully even make us a more decent person. So that being said, I love the story, highly recommend it, and I'm excited to see where the climax of it goes. See you guys later.